uh, drumming experience. My name is Carlos Velez and my teammates are Diego Valencia and Brian Redding and we're very happy to showcase uh, finally this project for you today. Um, the concept of uh, this uh, robotic drum experience is uh, focused on an actual actuator. So we call it bang butts or a robot, but uh, it's more like a combination of uh, modular small little actuators that form a big uh, robot that's going to actually perform the drums. Uh, go ahead, next slide. So um, the theme of this, um, this project is centered around robots and entertainment. And there are a number of um, uh, robots out there in the market that, uh, not uh, for sale, but uh, that ex uh, experimentally have been done, like Freddy Fantastico and a couple other robots that actually play the drums. And uh, we think it's uh, in the future this is going to be more uh, marketable and you, we're going to see a lot more uh, robots and entertainment. Uh, for years, uh, Disney has been using animatronics like in, in their entertainment, so we figure in the future there's going to be a lot of uh, 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 these type of robots doing various things. Uh, so this, I don't know if you guys can see it very well here, but uh, this is BangBot. Maybe if we turn on the lights. Oh uh, yeah. Let's see. So the robot itself is composed of a chassis that kind of holds all the different actuators, focus around the drum set. Um, it's, it's got a central controlling unit with all the circuitry that is used to couple it to a computer. The concept is that we're utilizing uh, MIDI information uh, or the MIDI protocol to read the, uh, music information from a computer, uh, you could literally download any MIDI file from the internet and have the drum set, uh, the drum set play it. Um, the overall basically system diagram of um, the system is composed of a software sequencing unit and you can use any software sequencing uh, program available in the market as long as it's MIDI compatible, it will work with the system. A MIDI controller, which I spoke uh, uh, just a little while ago, which is the brain of the unit that translates the note information into an actual uh, trigger on-off type um, a signal that goes out to the actuators, the manipulators, and then the actual drum set, which you can literally use any type of drum set uh, that you want. Uh, some of the design objectives, I don't know why it's getting cut off uh, here a little bit, but uh, were to uh, develop this uh, controller, to develop a second controller, which we'll talk about later, and you'll actually get to see what it does during the presentation. It's a, a little trick that we threw in there. Uh, we needed to develop a robust power supply because the system actually uh, uses um, a lot of electricity to power uh, all the various actuators and hardware. Um, and basically the actual manipulator that we'll talk about in a second. So uh, I just want to go briefly through um, this, um, uh, the technical portion, which uh, you guys have um, gotten a lot of details in previous presentations, just kind of see how it works. So again, um, we're utilizing MIDI. MIDI is composed of various messages in which uh, information is uh, encoded, and our controller basically is uh, intercepting that MIDI stream, conditioning the signal, synchronizing to it, converting it to parallel, extracting the message, and then routing that information to the actuator. So like I said, I just want to be brief on some of this information. And the controller that was developed um, that turned out to be basically like a 30-bit custom MIDI processor uh, with expandable trigger channels uh, onboard real-time and uh, basically the capability of uh, switching uh, both AC and DC for the various items that, uh, that we talked about. Just again, some of the features um, of uh, the BangBot controller versus uh, the, like a basic stamp or something and why we uh, uh, decided to use our own custom controller, um, which is the ability to process uh, multiple uh, bytes at the same time because we have the ability to have uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic uh, stackable channels, overflow protection, and it's a lot easier on the mapping versus having to reprogram the thing and download the program every time. We can do everything that we need to do on board. Um, again, last time we talked about a, a second controller um, and uh, we didn't tell you much about it. Basically, this is a controller that uh, is uh, listening to the music and to the media information and adding things to the overall performance. So um, we do that with music, but uh, we chose here for this particular uh, presentation that we're going to do a little bit later, we chose to um, add uh, uh, lighting to the whole system to just give it like a much more um, entertaining experience. So we're actually intercepting that media information and doing um, various things with uh, the lighting rig that we uh, set up. Um, in the future, it'll have more features and it'll be able to you know, filter the sound and, and, and do various things with it. So we're doing just some very limited things with it right now. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, load control and I'm going to hand it over to Diego who's going to talk about basically all the, uh, the power system of uh, the unit. Okay, um, all these controlling units from the controllers are giving signal of uh, TTL which is uh, computer logic uh, 0 to 5 volts. 
all these uh, signals have to be converted into what we could um, the power we need to move the actuators. So we have a DC uh, controller which is powers up 24 volts, and uh, we also have a DC, uh, DC to AC converter which powers up the uh, lighting. So what we have here is uh, four. Uh, power supplies which provides 24 volts and 4 amps creating uh, each power supply creates 300 watts capable of powering three actuators at a time. Now, next, next slide. Uh, we also have a 300 uh, watt power supply for the boards itself. Itself consumes about 4 amps, 3, uh, three and a half amps of power which is a lot of power if you <laughs> really think about it because we have uh, three um, processors on the actual um, controller. Uh, next slide. Also, for the fabrication of the uh, actuators, we what we use these uh, various composites and uh, rapid prototyping, which is a 3D mapping. And here we have an actual actuator where we can see um, this is just uh, like I said, rapid prototyping, printing 3D. And inside of here, it has a bunch of uh, um, springs, loads, and uh, which Brian is going to talk more about it, and the actual actuator. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, Brian here, that he can uh, talk to you about the uh, actual kinematics of the uh, robot. Yeah, we're keeping this design uh, very simple in conjunction with a uh, marketing class that um, and we decided to keep it very simple for the simple fact that we can mass produce it in just about any part of the world because our tolerances are very, um, you know, they're not very tight. You know, they don't need to be precise because the actuator is basically just on and off. And there's a pivot point. Next slide. You can see the pivot point for the drumstick. Actuator just basically taps it to whatever the controller puts out and that hits the drum set. Now, uh, this is basically how the solenoid works, on and off. Very simple design, you know, we can easily produce it, cheaply produce it. And go ahead. Uh, we went with the electronic drum set because there's just too, too many variables involved in the regular drum set. You know, same drum head can be struck a hundred different ways to get a hundred different sounds. We can control that with an electronic drum set. So we have one force applied to each head and we can get the different sounds that we need out of uh, just one tapping motion. And that concludes our presentation.